Welcome, everybody, to the fifth installment for this. Uh, it's a, a pleasure to have you all here. I'm happy that we were able to get Alyssa to talk about some shape languages for character design, and it's going to be a great opportunity to see other things besides just 3D or some game development stuff, because that's what I don't want. To, I don't want you guys to think that this is just game development. This is any art, anything that you kind of want to showcase and do. So... Uh, again, I just wanted to introduce Alyssa because Alyssa has been an, a very big advocate for a lot of different things, and she's been an amazing artist uh, that I've been f seeing grow uh, and has been doing amazing animation stuff, and they just uh, finished CCS, so it's really cool. So I can't wait to hear some amazing knowledge. So with that further ado, I'll give that to you, Alyssa, and you can take over. All right. Um, hi. So, yeah, I just graduated. Um... I'm in animation, but my focus is kind of in character prop and like visual development stuff. Um, so I'm going to talk about shape language and character design. Um, so I guess the first thing is what is shape language? Um, it's basically the concept of taking shapes that you're familiar with um, and making characters out of them to kind of like give them meaning or give them personality um they can kind of be like these are kind of like what disney had established as like the personality for each shape but i think that that can be used as a guide but you can also just not use that as a guide i think um can give i think it just gives um characters a lot more personality but you don't have to like adhere to like Round equals friendly, but you can. Um, but I'm going to show you guys like a lot of examples of like characters that adhere to these and characters that also don't. Um, but basically, the general idea is that circles are like approachable, harmless, squishy. Um, squares are solid, strong, and then triangles are like sharp. Um, villain, like villains, use a lot of triangles. Um, pointy edgy um so this can be used um in bodies as well as um faces um to give like more variety in your characters um so none of these are my art but um these are just kind of examples of what other people have kind of done using general shapes to give like a variety of character shapes um and this can be used in facial features too. I think it's really important to not just vary like your bodies and your characters, but also your facial features. Um, so yeah, um, these are some example of examples of like different face shapes um, and ways to like break down the face to give them different shapes. Um, I really like these ones down here, um, and these ones here. I think these are really good examples. Again, none of these are my art, and I did um, like link the ones that didn't say who they were by in the presentation if you guys want to check that out. Um, so here's some examples of round characters um, or characters that are like very circular and round in shape. Um, I tried to kind of pick a lot of examples in like 2D and 3D, and I put some of my characters in there as well. Um, just because I did want to make it clear that this concept can be for like game development and animation um 3d and 2d um i think it kind of carries over kind of across the board for that stuff um here's some examples of characters that use like squares as their main shapes um a lot of them are like very strong but not all of them like obviously he's a frail old man but he's a square um yeah, I think these are like a good variety of examples. And then like pointy, I said like are often used as villains, like triangles often symbolize villains. I think Batman is like the ex the exception here. Um but you know, he's supposed to be like edgy. So, lots of pointy triangles in his design. Um but yeah, triangles are most often associated with villains. Um I think the best character designs are like mixes of shapes. Um, I try to take some examples here and just kind of draw over them of like the shapes that they are. Um, I think just like taking shapes and warping them or mixing them up 
um, or using several different kinds of shapes within designs can make them a lot more interesting. Um, and, you know, you can use them for like creatures and animals and people and everything. <laughs> Give everything good shape language. Um, I think uh, a good formula for like cute and youthful characters um, is either having like a big head and big eyes with small features and small limbs or a big body with tiny features and tiny limbs. And also animals with big ears are always cute. Um, like the shape language of cute. <laughs> um, and I just included some examples of a bunch of different characters for that too. Um, I think the importance of shape language is to give variety in your characters. Um, so uh, I wanted to include some like character lineups to show you how like mixing up your characters can make them all very different and give them personalities um, on their own. These are by Steven Silver. They're just like a bunch of Danny Phantom designs. Um, I think that they have really fun shape language in them, but no two character here looks the same. And I think that is like the importance of it. Um, these are some other examples. Um, these are some like, I guess more realistic proportion ones um, of some Batman characters. This person's like rendition of Batman characters. Um, I thought these were cool because um, they do all have like more kind of realistic proportions, but they're all like super different and have really good shape language to them. And then I included Pokemon too, because I think like Pokemon are all different shapes. And I think that's a good example. Um, and something you want to pay attention to in your shape language is your silhouettes. So like what I'll do in my drawings, and these are some of my like designs that I blacked out. Um, I'll just, make everything black and just make sure that like characters don't look the same. Um, some of these look the same cause they're, these are in like sets of the same character. Um, but like this is a lineup. So I wanted to make sure every character was shaped different. Um, and you can make this carry over into like props and environments too. Um, I just included a few examples of that, of, some props that have really good shape language or like using different shapes to figure out environments and stuff. Um, I think that this kind of carries over into a lot of things, um, but I'm going to focus on character. Um, so I am going to do like a, like a demo, I guess, um, of this blob exercise. This one I found on Twitter and I really liked it uh, by like Chao Su. And I like these because um he just used them as like a guide like the shapes underneath as a guide and didn't adhere strictly to them but made all these really interesting characters out of them um i think this exercise is really good just to like loosen up and start thinking like differently about shape language and characters um and you can do these for like bodies or animals or kind of whatever you want um these were some old ones like some very old ones that i did where i did creatures and then i did like heads um, but I'm going to do some new ones, <laughs> I guess, for you guys. Um, give me one second. Um, I guess if anyone has any questions, too. Um. So I included these in the drive as well. Um, but so I guess like if you wanted to use them and make your own blob drawings, um, you can. Um, okay, hopefully you guys can see my Photoshop file. Yes, we can. <clears throat> awesome. Um, but yeah, I just drew a bunch of blobs and I'm going to draw kind of the first, I'm going to draw quickly, um, and kind of draw the first thing that comes to mind. And I guess if you guys want to like ask questions or whatever, while I do that, um, yeah. So for some reason, when I always do these, <laughs> I always end up drawing a lot of old people. So I'm going to try to mix it up, but we'll see what happens.
So yeah, if anybody has any questions or just wants to talk about some of the concepts that Alyssa's talking about, just unmute yourself, fire them off, or or give some compliments of how amazing uh, her drawings are. It's always good too. So I guess my first question to you, Alyssa, is how do you know when you feel like you have a good shape language for a certain character that you're kind of working towards? If that's a little... Um, I think... I guess what I try to do is, like, if I show it to other people and they can figure out the personality of the character without me having to explain, then I'm doing a pretty good job. <laughs> if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. And then it looks like uh, Brian asked, what are some examples of bad shape language? Um... I think, like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the term, like, same face syndrome. But I think that if you have, like, a character lineup and every single character looks exactly the same, like, they're the same body shape, basically. Um, like, that's why, like, uh, so, like, if you turn it all black and just look at the silhouettes and you can't differentiate your characters, like, you can't tell them apart. Um, I think that would be how you could tell that you have bad shape language. I can't see the chat from where I'm looking. No, it's okay. I'm, it I'm, I'm, no, I am watching for you, Alyssa. All you need to focus on is drawing and talking about stuff. <laughs> So I guess, Alyssa, when you're starting to make these designs, like how what kind of goes into your head when you're making these decisions of like, okay, what do I want to make out of this shape, or what are what are my thoughts? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I try to just not think when I do it, and just hmm. kind of. Well, I guess I do think, but I just try to focus on like making it an interesting character. Sometimes I guess I'll start like coming up with a story for them inside of my head while I'm doing it. Um, it also kind of depends on how fast I'm going. Like, for this, I'm going pretty fast, so... Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm trying to think less just to, like, get out something fun, you know? Oh, that makes sense. I feel like these are good ways to, like, um... Kind of get a rough of a character and then, like, develop it from there. If you get something interesting. So, <clears throat> Brian asked, uh, you mentioned that we can use multiple shapes in one characters, but is there a limit to the shape usage? Is it possible to overdose on the shape mixing? Hmm. Um. I feel like it's not necessarily limited. I would say I would just pay attention to, like, your silhouettes and also think about... Um, if your character, I guess, like, specifically in animation, especially, like, if your character is turning in a lot of directions, like, you have to make sure you don't get weird, like, overlaps, um, as, like, the body's moving around. And I know, like, in some cartoons and stuff, like, they'll just not move a character a certain way, because it'll mess with, like, the weird shape language of it. Um, but if you need to move your character like 360 degrees or whatever. Um, definitely consider like how many shapes you're using and if they're going to overlap weird. I hope that makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. Um, let's see.
Okay, <clears throat> we got two questions from Lauren. One, what would you say is the hardest shape to work with in terms of creating variety? Mm, I would say circles. Because if you think about it, a lot of circle characters look the same. Because <laughs> it's just a circle. Like, if you're just using circles, I think it gets a little harder to come up with variety. Not impossible, though. I would just say that's the hardest one. Second question from Lauren is, how would you go about mixing up shape inspiration? For example, if you wanted to do a good hero character utilizing triangles, what approach would you use uh, so they fill the role and not look like villainous? I guess how do you break the stereotypes of shape language and what character roles are associated with certain shapes? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think it, like the characters, I guess like outward personality and how they act can change that, or also like um, the outfits. I guess that you're putting your characters in. Um, can like I'm trying to think of a good triangle character that's like not a villain. Um. Okay, so, like, I don't watch Phineas and Ferb, but I know one of those is a triangle, <laughs> and that's not a villain. Um, so, I guess, for, like, his design, <laughs> I'm, like, trying to think of what he actually looks like, because I don't even think I, I've, I didn't really watch that show, but I am. He's got I a triangle face and, like, a, a pill body, I think it is. I can't remember. You know, he's probably dressed like a kid, right? He's dressed like a yeah. boy, like a little boy. So in that case, like, he's a triangle, but since he's dressed like a little boy, you know he's a little boy and yeah, not a villain. Yeah, like he's a triangle with a, like a, rectang a long rectangle-shaped body. Yeah. So. Yep, see? So he's got, like, you know, his little cargo shorts and his little stripy shirt, and, you know, he's he's looking like a friendly guy. <laughs> Like, facial expressions, I think, are a good way to, like, uh, make them, you know, uh, have the personality that you want while not necessarily adhering to, like, that strict shape language. That's why I said it It can be, like, used as a guide, but I think it's more important to just make sure your characters have interesting shapes. So it looks like Patrick has asked, when you are concepting a character, how do you balance making a character you want while still trying to make them interesting in terms of shape and silhouette? Um, I think just doing a bunch of iterations is kind of how you can accomplish that. Um, like, so I would I would like think about the character that you want to make, and then um. I would just start like brainstorming and just like um I would make maybe a bunch of shapes and see if you can you know like lay out a bunch of shapes on a paper. You don't have to do it exactly like this, but um like lay out shapes on paper and then um try to make each one a different version of the character that you're trying to make in terms of personality. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. That's what I would do anyways. Okay, Brian also asked, <clears throat> this sort of goes with along with the stereotype thing. Can you think of a good circle main character? Poe from Kung Fu Panda doesn't count, I guess. <laughs> uh, I feel like circle characters normally become sidekicks rather than the main character, uh, main attraction of a game or movie. Kirby. <laughs> Kirby is like one of my favorite ones because he's literally just a circle with more like little circles <laughs> on him. Basically, oh, I completely forgot about Kirby. That was it easy? I love Kirby. So. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good answer. Yeah. Kirby's a good answer. Yeah, I said Kung Fu Panda doesn't count because um, it was the, I thought that was the easiest answer, but <laughs> yeah, he is also a circle. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
let myself not to think, and then I'm thinking too too hard. <laughs> Three, four. The shape is hard. <laughs> so then, Lisa, why is this shape hard? <laughs> because it's weird. <laughs> but I guess that's what makes it fun. That's why I feel like this is a good exercise, specifically trying to use blobs, because mm -hmm. it could be anything. <laughs> and like, if that's why I was like, if if you want to do it too, that's why I threw them in the drive because. Um, I feel like everybody thinks of different things when they look at blobs like this. It's kind of um oh, it's almost like a <laughs> like a psychological experiment. <laughs> mm. So it looks like Patrick asks, I know talking while drawing is is an art in itself, but is it, if you're able to describe what's going on in your mind while you were doing this exercise, that would be super helpful. Um <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> right now I feel like this shape is screaming villain collar, like big spooky collar. So I'm going with villain. <laughs> um, I think this sh the shape at the top that I'm outlining is going to be the hair. Um, or, or a spooky Phineas from Phineas and Ferb, <laughs> since that's the topic. I feel like this could be a million things, honestly. Yeah. Um. But what I was thinking just now was, well, okay, let's do this. So I'm going to make these sunglasses. But I want to make them like <laughs> bat sunglasses. I saw a picture of bat sunglasses recently, and I thought they were really cool. <laughs> um. I'm gonna give him a pointy nose, cause we're going for villain, and I'm gonna give him a pointy face. Villains are my favorite thing to design, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're not all good, but that's kind of the exercise. That's kind of part of it. They don't all have to be good. <laughs> Ryan asks, uh, when designing a new character, what comes first, the shape or the personality? Or is there something else? Oh... It depends. I guess in this case, the shape came first. But in the case of, like, designing a character for a job or a project, then the personality would come first. To kind of piggyback off that list, so when you're starting to create characters yourself, is there certain things that you do uh, to really kind of bring out a character that you want to come to life? Yes, I... um. I like to make Pinterest mood boards first and foremost when I start like character designing. Um or I'll like gather inspo from other things. Um I drew like a strawberry bunny grandma that I 
the inspiration was like those little strawberry old lady candies with like the strawberry looking wrapper um but anyways uh i'll pull like an inspiration board or like whatever i'll just make a pinterest board and then um depending on the project i will like write things about the character that i'm going to like design um just to kind of like establish their personality but i guess if i would like to work a job where i don't have to do the writing part to be honest <laughs> someday because i don't know if i'm the best at that but um so like i'll just do like a lot of my characters are just tropes to be honest um but i'll kind of figure out like the character the personality and then i'll start just like slapping things down on paper so that's kind of how i do it the order of operations I like the Pinterest mood boards. <laughs> Those are my favorite. So it looks like Brian asked as well, what are some solutions to badge shape language? What if a game has a character with low shape variety? Um, I would say just... Uh, I guess go back to the drawing board on your designs. I don't, um, hmm. I think that's like where the silhouette becomes important. Like, um, like if it has low shape variety, then you want to go back and I guess add shape variety. Does that make sense? should make sense looks like lauren asked does color impact shape language or vice versa or does that really purely uh rely on the character's role or personality i feel like that it really depends um i i think i feel like color design is kind of a whole job on its own like it could be it could impact be impacted by like the character's role or personality i feel like so for a lot of character design positions specifically um like in animation especially like 2d animation you don't actually do any of the color design like when you're a character designer you're often just doing black and white line work and then the color designer plays that role um but if you were designing characters like where you were doing every part of the process, I guess you would maybe think a little more about that uh, during the process. Like for me, I usually make the character first and then I decide color after. Like it's an afterthought for me personally. But that could also depend on your own like drawing process too, honestly. They made a lot of old people in the last one, so I know <laughs> too many on these this next one. I want to make old people. It's the most fun. I just want to give everyone big sunglasses too, <laughs> or big noses. These do look really good, though, Lisa. Thank you. They're, I feel like they're kind of awkward to do sometimes. Why and like I that? said, not all of them, oh, not all of them turn out good, but. Why do you say they're awkward? Um, probably because it just makes you think outside of the box. Like, it makes you have to think outside of the box. Mm. 
And I got some weird shapes in this one. <laughs> Okay, Brian also asked, what are some ways to express shapes in a situation where majority body deformation is limited? Major body deformation is limited. Um, I think if you mean like to keep it more realistic, I think um like those Batman examples I had pulled up were like a good example of that where like they all had somewhat realistic proportions, but they still had different body types. Like, change up a character's, like, height and weight. Um, also, uh, outfits. Outfits are, like, a great way to change up the shape language of something. Outfits and hair are a great way to change up the shape language of something without changing the body up as much. Um, and, yeah, anime does it a lot. Um, like, especially... What in anime games specifically that I see, like they'll just have crazy shaped hair and uh, weapons and outfits, um, and like colors, and that's a really good way to, like, you can get the shape language in in that stuff instead of the body, if you need to. So Patrick has also asked, do you have any history or know anyone where they use 3D tools to help their character design and shape language for 2D drawings? Um, I really only use 3D to, like, do backgrounds. Um, very limitedly, I am not really, like, a 3D artist. But I know some people will use, like... 3D models to draw over for poses. Um, I guess I don't really know too much about people doing it, like, in 3D to help 2D. Um, I think you can just do shape language in 3D. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm not really sure how you would do that. I don't have a lot of 3D knowledge, though, so... I can only do like basic shapes <laughs> to like block out buildings or something. Yeah, it's more than some. It helps a lot uh, when you're bad at perspective like I am. <laughs> but um, I don't know too much in 3D, honestly. I took like the intro to my class. Um, that was pre pretty much it. <laughs> Never too late to learn, I guess. Like we were saying before. I'm going to give this one a mullet.
that's the only thing going through my head right now is this this needs to be somebody with a mullet. Beautiful mullet. <laughs> um, hmm. The shape in the bottom right corner is also awkward <laughs> and weird. I'm not sure what to do with it. I just want to draw old people. So it looks like Patrick asked another question. When noticing bad use of shape language, what are some common mistakes that you see artists design? I think it's just the worst thing I see is just when all the designs look the same. Like if you were to black it out and they all look the same, that's like the biggest mistake I think that I see. Um, where it's just like the same character, exactly the same shapes with just a different outfit. And maybe like different hair color. Um, lack of variety. I need the spice. I need the variety. <laughs> Alyssa, do you think there's any other practices that you could do to work on shape language? Besides um, this one? You could also do like bodies like this, or you could use. Um, just um you know like squares and triangles and make characters like entire bodies you know out of those shapes um i think i think i mentioned it before you can also just um like take one character in their personality and do a bunch of different like shapes and shape language of like the same character to try different things. Um, those are honestly the best exercises that I have for shape language. Um, or like taking, doing figure or gesture drawing, but really exaggerating the proportions on the people and then um, seeing if you can get like interesting shape language that way. Um, I think that's a fun exercise to do. So the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Those are definitely ones that I do, like, personally. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I'm struggling on this one.
Did you notice any trends that you were doing when you first started using this kind of stuff? Uh, when you were first starting to learn about this shape language? That you were making mistakes see. on? Like any mistakes that you were making when you first started drawing um, shapes? Or pitfalls? I'm trying to think. I think I used to just have like boring shape language, but there was a while where, here I'll just show you, all my characters were shaped like the Angry Beavers like cartoon. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that. <laughs> but basically all my characters were like, And they had like little <laughs> arms. This is what the angry beavers kind of look like. <laughs> and then this was usually a head of some sorts. I drew like a rat like that a lot, but there was like a second where all my characters were this. Or <laughs> there was also a minute. This is kind of before I learned about shape language, but all my characters look like beans with adventure time legs. Like this. <laughs> And they all looked like that. Every single one. Um, but really, again, that was just lack of variety. That's all that was. Oh, I see someone else typing. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I have to show. Cool. Unless you want me to keep drawing over blocks. No, no this, is totally, this is totally fine. So if uh, no, this is great. Uh, so if anybody else has any questions, uh, unmute yourself, talk to us, see what's going on, or uh, anything else would be really cool just to kind of talk to Alyssa. Alyssa's here now, so let's get some cool answers out of her. Or you can type it out too. I'm nice, you can talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like Brian and Alyssa are going to be asking a question. Looks like, are there any differences in your approach to shape language design for more stylized versus more realistic? Um, I think when I do more stylized stuff, I tend to get a little crazier with like the shape language. Um, And that's when I start like mixing and warping shapes and that's like why i like to do this exercise actually in like more in cartoon like i like to do this exercise like while drawing cartoons specifically because um you can get really funky with cartoons um a lot more so than you can with realistic stuff um i actually that's drawing like shape language into real more realistically proportioned things is something that i am not as good at but i am working on because <laughs> I do think it is quite a bit harder um to do that like in a more realistic way. Would you say uh, uh would you say that a game like Fire Emblem has bad shape language? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm gonna look up I've never played Fire Emblem but so I'm gonna look up I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Looking it up. Yeah, they have a lot of different characters in each game, so. I just looked up character lineup. I mean... Hard, because I can't just find, like, a... <laughs> There's not a lot of ones that are full bodies. I'm not going to say it's bad. I mean, they all have different outfits, and they all have different, like, color designs. And they all have different hair. I would like to see more height variety, but cool. I would say with the outfits, they're doing like they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, Alyssa, any other last minute advice to everybody oh that gosh. you want to to give before we end this? Um. Never settle for your very first character iteration of something. Um, or, like, 
maybe you do, but don't like settle on it right away. Like draw a bunch of different ones anyways. Like force yourself to draw a bunch of different versions of the same character um before you decide because sometimes most often your first sketch is not your best sketch of a character. Um that's like a general rule that I try to do for myself. Cool. And, awesome. Yeah. That's some great advice, Lisa. Uh again, thank you for coming and giving that talk. That was really amazing. Uh I hope you all learned something or maybe know a new cool new exercise for you to get some really cool shapes into your characters. Uh, so again, I just wanted to thank you again, Alyssa, for taking the time. It was really cool. It looks like a lot of people are already starting to say thank you, which is great. Thanks for um, listening. Oh, yeah, also, if you do the exercise, send it to me because I want to see what you do with the shapes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool.